guys what's up it's me Priscilla so I recently put a poll up on my uh, you know you can post polls now as a YouTube creator and you can ask questions and I asked what you wanted to see more videos of and you guys all asked what won the most was the arts tips and tricks and then tutorials character character tutorials was a close second I saw one request not too long ago that somebody asked that said can you give us a tutorial on how to paint skin tones with watercolor and I thought that was a great suggestion so I'm gonna go ahead and go with it I have Philip and Anne from The Greatest Showman so I doodled out Zendaya and Zac Efron's character so we have two different shades of skin I wanted to go ahead do a tutorial using my watercolors I use koi watercolors I have the tube kind and I also have a palette kind and I got koi watercolors either from Michaels or Hobby Lobby or Amazon.com so the first thing you want to do is one if you're gonna do skin colors I would suggest to start with completely beautiful clean water in your watercolor cup and to have a good section of your palette already washed off so I mean I've got all this and you can see where I've done skin tones here and I've done skin tones here but I've done skin tones everywhere so I always try to clean off a good spot if I'm getting into some skin colors Koi watercolor has they do have a very good skin color overall skin color grab a glob of that and I add a ton of water to it so I can get a good wash going in this section if you do not have a skin color the best choice that you have to mix colors with is a little bit of red and a little bit of orange and everybody should have an orange and a red in their palette when it comes to basic watercolor palettes and all you do is you take that red and that orange and you mix them together but get a complete wash going so it's completely diluted. I would add a little bit of your brown, so if you don't, you have to have a brown somewhere on your watercolor palette. Most watercolor palettes have at least 12 colors, and you should have a red, an orange, and a brown. You see right here, I've got a skin tone. Go ahead and use this skin tone just a little bit on Zach's face. So as you can see, I do have a really good peachy color. What I like to do is I like to go around and at least cover the entire face with that overall first layer of skin. Because the point is to go ahead and build up on layers because layers are very important when it comes to watercolor. Even though Zendaya has a darker skin tone, I do always start out with a light base just to go ahead and get it around. That way we can have our highlights cover her entire face just like I did with Zach's. Alright, so let's jump back to Mr. Carlisle. And now that I have this mixture going on right here, I want to start getting a little darker with some shading. Watercolor is based on just piling layers on top of layers to get those darker shadows. So I'm just literally going to go right back to this original color that I had and add those layers. And I like to imagine where my light source is. So let's go underneath the rim of his hat, eyelids, his nose. And now that we don't have a line for a nose ridge, but we can imagine that the nose ridge is right there under his eyes, along the side of his face, underneath his mouth, under his hand, across his knuckles, and over by his thumb. I can have a good idea that maybe the light source is coming down this way. So we do have all these shadows going on. So let's jump to Zendaya. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that peachy color that I already have. And then I'm gonna start mixing it that darker skin tone so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my brown and my peach and mix those together and that should give me a good dark layer color and I'll go ahead and start filling in those shadows another big thing that I like to go ahead and throw into my skin tones you probably never thought of it but I like to use purples and blues as a type of shading when it comes to skin tone just because if you were to look at a picture you would notice that it 
depends on the lighting. Most of your shadows are a cool shadow. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue. I have a light blue, or any blue in general. It doesn't matter because you're gonna dilute the crap out of it. I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue, a little bit of my black, and that gives me a cool shadow. You see how that's of dark blue? But the more water I add to it, the less of a color it'll be because I'm diluting it. Let's go ahead and jump to back to Philip's face. I like to get this layer of cool shadow in and then I like to pile on top of that a little bit more because we're in the circus. If you've seen The Greatest Showman, we're in the circus so we've got all kinds of colors going on everywhere. So it's okay to go ahead and play with a little bit of colors. I would not do this for Zendaya yet because we should get at least one more layer Another thing I'd like to go ahead and start adding to Philip's face is a little bit of yellow. We're in the circus, so we've got these yellow highlights going on, and that's completely fine to start adding to skin tones no matter what the setting is. Add another layer to Zendaya's skin. I know, I keep, <laughs> I keep jumping back and forth when it comes to their names. <laughs> it's either Anne, or it's Zendaya, or it's Philip, or Zach. <laughs> Now I'm actually going to use a little bit of Zendaya's colors to jump onto Philip's face. Go underneath his, go above his eyelids just to get that good contrast of eyelids. So now I'm going to just grab a lot of my regular brown. And if you just have one brown in your palette then you want to go ahead and take that brown and mix it with a black just so you get a darker brown. I have a light brown, a peach, and I have a dark brown. So I'm going to start mixing in my dark brown into this layer of skin color that I have made so I can start filling in darker shadows and just so I'm not completely whitewashing Zendaya's skin out. Now I'm going to start using my cool shadow on Zendaya's skin. I'm going to go back to my original wash that I have of Zach's skin and I'm going to go over and just get one more good layer on everything. Another huge thing that we have to go ahead and get is the blushing. No matter what, uh, unless you're a vampire, you have a little bit of blushing going on. So I always take my pure red and I just add a ton of water to it so we have an overall good pink. The last part that I would add just because I have it it does not mean that you don't have to have it because right now we have a lot of good strong highlights on the skin tones but I have white gouache by Winsor & Newton and you can see I'm putting it on my palette right now and I go ahead and I just take a little bit of it and I go in and I start to find white highlights so I would go to like her tip of the nose and across her nose ridge just to highlight a couple spots maybe highlight her chin across her jawline and then jump to Philip's face, get his nose maybe across the side of his face and then where his nose ridge is. And this overall dilutes the colors that are on the paper already just to give it a couple of highlights. It is an option. It's a good piece to have when it comes to watercoloring. I love having white gouache, especially for the eyes. I can go in and give those real, those shine to their eyes. Also is a great help when it comes to erasing mistakes on your watercolors. I'm gonna finish this up in the next day and I hope that this was helpful when it comes to using watercolors for skin tones. As always, leave in the comments down below what character tutorials you're interested in. I saw that Wendy was an interest, so maybe we can do that next Thursday. So leave in the comments down below what characters you'd like to learn or more arts tips and tricks. And I hope you all have a most wonderful day. Bye!